In the wake of President Trump's firing of FBI Director James Comey, Colorado's congressional delegation released several different statements. Representative Diana DeGette called for Congress to set up an independent commission to investigate the POTUS connection to Russia. Meanwhile, U.S. Senators Cory Gardner and Michael Bennett each called for an in-depth look into Russian influence into the 2016 election. Patty, the cable news shows have beaten the sucker to death, and rightfully so. It's a big issue. So let's concentrate on the effects of, in Colorado and the Colorado delegation. Do you think this was an odd thing for the Colorado, especially the Colorado Republican lawmakers, to have to come up with a statement about uh, on the fly? I know we, I, I remember the, the Twitter feed following Kyle Clark. He was impatiently waiting for a statement from Mike Kaufman, or excuse me, it was actually Senator Cory Gardner. Uh, what kind of pickle do you think the situation put uh, that th this put uh, Colorado lawmakers in? Well, the same pickle that all lawmakers are in, which is how do you deal with a White House that can't get its story straight? And as of yesterday, all of a sudden we found out that it was not because the assistant attorney general had done this whole memo about how Comey had to go because of his bad behavior towards Hillary Clinton, and we all believed that. But yesterday, Donald Trump actually, <clears throat> actually told Lester Holt that, well, it was kind of because of this, Comey was going to go because of this Russia and stuff. It was a little hard to parse his sentence. but So Colorado and all, le all legislators need to decide what they're going to say and are they going to call for an independent investigation, which Kaufman just did, which is really an interesting move for him. I mean, that's uh, Gardner was calling for investigations, but he wants it to stay with the FBI, whoever might still be left at the FBI. David, do you think GOP candidates are seeing this as something that may follow them as a problem into 2018? We're far away from that election, but we're not far away from the production of campaign ads and everything else that Democrats will be lining up against what should be vulnerable uh, Republican candidates this year, or next year, rather. Yes, there's a national Quinnipiac poll, which on the generic U.S. House ballot gives Dems plus 16, which is enormous and if, if that held out that's a tsunami size thing this is the uh, and representative Kaufman has agreed with representative to about an, an independent uh, commission I would say that the house investigation is completely collapsed because of ridiculous partisanship among the leadership on both sides but the the Senate investigation where the committee is headed by Grassley and uh, it, is much more serious and, and proper so there, there's some hope for that. Uh, this is a, another example of how Donald Trump represents the complete triumph of Clintonism in the Democratic Party. Uh, you know, not only did he got fired because she's the guy, she, he's the one she blames uh, for her loss, but we have the the same Clinton thing of the principal does something stupid and indefensible, and then gets a lot of bad publicity about it and the principal's reaction is to throw a tantrum and blame all of his or her aides uh, for not fixing you know the problem it's you, you drive your car um, into Cherry Creek and you know you start calling and, and yelling at the, at the car mechanic and uh, you know the, the uh, person who, who helped you buy the car with a, with a loan it's also very Clinton-esque because it is 24 years ago today, I believe, almost April 21st, 2013, when President Bill Clinton fired Bill Sessions, the FBI director who I, th I think over the course of the entire course of the FBI had more integrity uh, than anyone else. And it's what the critics said at the time was right. It was a preview for a presidential administration that would be pervaded by sleaze, corruption, lies, cover-up, and foreign bribery. Um, so Donald Trump, with this idea that he's going to put this Russia thing behind him by firing Comey, put aside, even if he was a nefarious, he's not a, he may be nefarious, but he's no evil genius, because this is the most spectacular backfire you could imagine to elevate the issue. SpongeBob SquarePants has a better ability to think ahead and, and plan strategically than Trump does. The damage to himself in, in his sub-SpongeBob uh, performance this week is, is just to him, but if we were in some foreign crisis, this is not the kind of guy uh, who's displaying the ability uh, to think about things in a uh, even in a short-term way. 
Eric, I don't know if um, Sean Spicer is hiding in a pineapple under the sea, uh, a la SpongeBob SquarePants, <laughs> but I wouldn't blame him for doing so. Uh, we, we're getting accustomed to the fire hose of issues that are coming out of the White House. It was a little weird in the beginning, but now we're just used to a fleet of tweets, everyone having to quote a lot of different sources, people getting caught flat-footed within the administration, outside the administration. But outside of D.C. and getting into a place like Colorado, it's really a purple state. We're going to have competitive congressional uh, races in 2018, statewide candidates who are not affiliated with D.C., but that's still part of the partisanship. Are we going to see some of these bigger issues out of D.C. affect what's going on in Colorado? Oh, absolutely we are, and we have for a number of election cycles now. It used to be a rule decades ago, quote, unquote, all politics is local. I almost think that's been turned on its head these days. All politics is national. You have people running for local office. I, I noticed somebody announced his candidacy, a credible guy, Phil Weiser, announced his candidacy this week for Attorney General of Colorado. Whole platform was standing up to Donald Trump. So you take a local office, it's the opposite of what it was 20 years ago, Dominic. Now everything has become federalized. Donald Trump is a piece of that, but this was going on before Donald Trump. So many angles of this, and it's been a wild, wild week. And if Donald Trump did not know the reaction that was going to ensue, then he's tone deaf. And whatever other criticisms out there you have of Donald Trump, I don't think he's completely tone deaf. I mean, I think any time that Donald Trump is the center of conversation is in some respects almost a good day for Donald Trump. I mean, in that textbook narcissism or what have you. Uh, and Lord knows he is the center of conversation. Again, we are 110 or 115 days in to a 1,400-some-odd-day administration. It is hard to see how this intensity sustains itself. Not only was the firing weird, but the optics that, fire, that followed it. The next morning, you wake up to see Henry Kissinger with an unannounced, un at least there hadn't been on the official schedule, visit to the Oval Office. And I'm not a Kissinger critic necessarily, um, but A, it's pretty dated. B, it is completely Nixonian. I mean, I, who staged that one? And then he's ushered out, and you bring in the Russian foreign minister and the Russian ambassador. The optics and... and uh, the other piece that just fascinates me these days is I have no idea. I used to know, okay, you give me a Democrat, you give me a Republican, and I can sort of predict where they're going to come down on most issues. I have no idea what it means, particularly to be a Republican these days. To be a Republican used to be, you meant you were interested in balanced budgets, you were interested in free trade, you were tough on Russia and skeptical of Russia and trust but verify with Russia to steal the Reagan line. All that's been turned on its head. I have no idea. And whether it's during the Trump administration or with whatever follows Donald Trump, I have no idea how they redefine what that party is. Pam, we talked about how this could affect the 2018 election here in Colorado because it's supposed to be some pretty tight races. But as Democratic strategists are coming together in these coming months and look at all these variety of issues they could focus on, what's the best way for them to look at it so to not overplay their hand? First, I'm not certain you could overplay this hand. Um, <laughs> if, you know, if you're sitting at a poker table and you get four aces or, or a straight flush, you're pretty happy, and this is just about a straight flush. Y you know, I, I think what's happening, and to go to David's point about the Quinnipiac poll, um, this president is doing more to injure the Republican Party brand and candidates for that party than... than any possible thing I could have imagined. So I don't know if you can overplay it because he keeps giving you issue after issue. And it's not just the, the substance of the issue is not enough. I mean, did the president and his campaign have inappropriate conversations or ties with Russia? The cover up is worse. And bungling the cover up is even far worse than that. So now the problem is, did you do something wrong, but now you're showing a complete lack of integrity and an inability to tell the truth. And so th that ripples throughout, and, and, and what I think we're going to see happen as we start moving into this next cycle is Colorado is a purple state. And in many ways, um, Eric asked the question, what does a Republican stand for anymore? And I think if you look in Colorado, you'll find the answer. You won't find it in Washington, D.C., because too many of Republican leadership there is just happy that they have power or the perception of power. They'll do and let anything happen 
which is why President Trump is doing what he's doing. But here locally, it's why Cory Gardner and Mike Kaufman or others are saying, we've been backed into a corner. We don't have a choice. This guy's just off the chain. Time for an independent investigation. We need to maintain some personal accountability and credibility to the people of Colorado. And that's what I think you'll see happening. But they're going to have to do some heavy rowing because this president isn't making it easy for anyone who has the Republican brand right now.